This week's video is about how I set up my phone and some tips about how I use it, how I use it to focus, change my exposure, uh, some of the different lens options, and some of the different uh, software packages that come built into the phone. Um, just a heads up, next week's video is going to be about how I use dodging and burning to create different avenues or ways for, for people to enter into the pictures and find their way through it. So the first thing I want to do, you guys, is show you how to set up your grid on your camera. Go to settings, scroll down to your camera, and then you'll see here where it says grid. I'll turn it on and off right now so you can see that. Turn that on. And when you turn the grid on, what that does is it gives you, it helps you with a couple of things. It helps you uh, compositionally. You can use it for finding your four main points of interest. As you see, these are highlighted. Also, you have your rule of thirds kind of gridded out and it just keeps your horizon line straight. I just wanted to talk about this scene now that's in front of me. It's fairly complex with all the shadows and contrast. There's a, a technique with the camera where you can tap and you see where I tap, it changes where the camera is focusing, the white balance and the exposure. So it covers, covers if you tap and hold it, and now it's locked in that area. So if I wanna recompose, but I wanna keep that area in focus, that's what I have just done. One other trick when you're, when you're tap, you can see there's a little sun symbol that has come up there. So check this out. As you slide your finger up and down, you can change your exposure, which is pretty cool. I also wanna talk about live photo, which if you, is on the top left here, you can see I turn it on, a live, a live symbol comes on top. Now it's off, now it's on. So watch, the, watch that yellow live symbol. And you see how long it's on? That's how long that exposure is because it's taking multiple pictures and it's doing almost like a little video. I will show you later how you can edit using that and, and make a different picture selection than the one that's on the screen. It's kind of cool. We're looking into this grove of trees. I'm gonna darken my exposure down slightly because remember with most digital cameras, they don't handle highlights well. So I typically bring my exposure down just a little bit for the highlights. So you can see I've got detail in there. So I'll snap that shot. It's a live shot. I'm gonna turn live off once, do the same picture. Another aspect I wanna talk about is reading the screen. And what I mean by that is I look in each of these nine grids, these nine squares in the grid, and I look through those and I look for anything in the picture that I don't want in there. And I, I can either change my perspective a little bit, I can crop perhaps a little bit, or I can just move some, make sure I have the proper exposure that I want. But that's pretty good in there. I like the foliage. I'm going to come down just a little bit more to bring the foliage in here just a bit, focusing on that. You see how I'm turning the camera just slightly because I want this area right there to be in the center of the frame. Because when I edit this later, I will darken everything around it and build my image around that little sequence of light and trees and shadows. I'm going to talk about how I manage my pictures for just a little bit. If there's an image I like and I think I might want to edit, um, the first thing I'll do is I'll heart it. You see down here at the bottom, you'll see that highlighted now. It gets a heart. Um, if, and then if I don't like it, then I unheart it. That one's okay for, for editing purposes. And I'm just going to look at these real quick. Can you see how that moves? That's the live action. Go under your favorites. You go under albums to favorites and they'll be right here. So then when I want to edit them, I can. Now let's go on to the next piece of this. And that's work with live pictures. So the first thing is, if you go up under edit, you see I highlighted edit, and you hit this button on the bottom, it's the, the live symbol. You can change which picture you want to be your main picture that you work with. You see how I can select through all those, and you see how it says make key photo. So I can look at all the pictures that were taken and kind of decide what I like. I'm going to take that one right there. That's now my, my key photo, so I'm all done. Then the next thing you can do is swipe up and you get effects. So loop, bounce, long exposure. See how, that, see how it blurs it because that, that piece was moving around so much. Bounce will make it kind of bounce back and forth again. See that? And loop, it just loops it. Yeah, just loops it. Makes it because of their little videos. All right. Last evening I went out and explored a few potential locations to shoot photos at. So now, uh, just before the sun comes up, I'm out 
I'm walking to one of these two locations. Actually, there's two over here that might be interesting. Uh, but it's kind of a fun way I like to work. I go out and I explore and I get some ideas in my head about where I want to go and then I go check them out. So you can see now the sun is just starting to hit the top of the hill and there's the trees I'm looking for so I'm gonna I'm going to uh, kind of work my way down in here to the left. I don't like the way this picture is evolving. I, it's just not coming together the way I hoped it would have. It's absolutely potentially a picture, but the sun's just at the wrong angle. Um, I didn't anticipate that. I was hoping it would come up a little bit at a further southern profile than it did, but it's going to cross over behind the tree, not down this way. So I'm going to watch it develop and just see if anything else here catches my eye, but uh, I'm not going to put a lot of energy into making this picture. I just don't think it's going to happen. I could be wrong. I could be surprised, but for now, I'm just going to sit and watch. I had a change of heart. There might be something here that's interesting. I'm going to take a look at this real quick. I just had this great phrase, this description of what I do, and I shot on slow-mo. <laughs> Oops. I see visually interesting locations all the time. Lines that work a certain way, juxtapositions, you know, just little tidbits of information that, that spark my interest. A lot of times it's only one element within a greater scene, and that greater scene needs to all come together into one picture. And that's what I'm looking for. So it's understanding what I personally find creative, my own personal creative idiosyncrasies. Pictures have to be more than just light. They need to have subject matter, composition, information. They need, they need to capture me on a deeper level with many more tangents and many more avenues of information, um, you know, multiple layers. Just one thing, whether it's just the light or subject matter or a line or something, is not enough. I, it's interesting. I'll look at it. And a lot of times I photograph it just because it's part of working on my craft, is working the fundamentals. But it's got to be a lot more in there to make it a picture that I'm going to invest my time and energy to create. <laughs> 